Right, night vision. We started off many years ago with military type uh, equipment. This is a tube scope that's an American manufacturer and stand alone, stick it onto a military type rifle, big, heavy, uh, 1960s technology going way back. We've now moved on with that in a progression to much lighter, this again is military, but you can see the difference in the size between the two and the weight, which is quite terrific, but good enough to be used without any other illumination, just pointed, and it does all the work. Then civilians became involved and they wanted bits of kit that they could fit into or onto their own rifles. Didn't matter so much about adding on illumination because the quarry doesn't shoot back as it would for the military. And this one just bolts onto the front. They then got stuff onto the back, um, tube scopes that went into the middle and relatively expensive, quite difficult to manufacture. Um, used for a good number of years, something like 40, 60 years, the technology has been evolving. Recently, it's gone into digital, which again, like a camera, very similar technology, but the equipment is getting much smaller and lighter. This is digital, which is showing a picture into what is basically a scope. So the two now, ca now come all in one. Added illumination which is needed and you've got a good picture of what you're looking at, uh, gives good, good definition. And so from the early digital, just like the tube, it has evolved on and we're now getting much better equipment. And this, believe it or not, is 400 pounds for this whereas you're talking of five, six, seven thousand pounds for the old military gear. Things have progressed on to even more, and whereas the military have been using thermal images for many years at vast expense, we now have little tiny thermal images that are handheld. Uh, they can now be used to put straight onto the rifle as gun sights but the biggest use at the moment is as a viewer, and they're showing you the heat from an animal. Lightweight, easy to use, self-contained. This one's got an added battery on, which allows 20 hours of use without any further ado, but with an internal battery that lasts several hours. And the view from these is early. We haven't got up to the military uh, specifications yet, but the m monetary cost of these is within the reach of many gamekeepers and people who are serious about watching wildlife. And they've opened up a new vision, a completely different view of what's going on. They need no other added illumination, just the heat source from an animal. You can view something through cover, uh, they're not very good if you have a lot of rain where everything's the same heat or everything is very hot because there's no differential between the heats. So it needs different heats on the different things it's viewing. But out of that, you will see either in a white blob or a black or the outline of, of anything that's out there, it will look through cover, it... Um, or view, I can see a field mouse with this at 100 yards as it gallops across the field. And you're watching all the wildlife out there. If it's anywhere within reasonable distance, you will view what's going on and without disturbing it. Uh, I've got somebody down the road who is very much into bats and they're going to borrow this technology shortly to be able to use that. But for us, for deer counts, you can go out, drive along, don't disturb what you're seeing out there. And you can count the deer off, no problem whatsoever, not disturbing them. And even if you see part of a deer or a herd through a hedge, you can get a pretty good idea of what's there. And it's easy to identify the different species of deer just by their attitude. Foxes and 
things like that a little bit more difficult. They've got very good fur coat. They don't give out a big heat signature. And so when you're viewing them, they can look very much like a hare because hares rushing around give out a, a relatively a greater heat signature than a fox. Whereas a muntjac, they really glow. They're a jungle beast and the head glows really white or black, depending on what um, system you've got turned on. And very easy to see the differences. Really good for identifying, picking something up but we're now moving on to putting this onto the rifle so one is able to not only see what's out there but to use it as a uh, for um, quarry shooting. Early technology, one has to be a little careful of what one's doing because the definition and the uh, picture presented to you, you have to be very careful of identifying things and take your time and the more you're out there with one of these bits of kit the more you realize what's going on and learn about nature they are wonderful fun to use and I recommend them if anybody can afford one of these things to go out and get one if I'm sitting out in a high seat I really prefer using one of these as a viewer because obviously if you've got something fixed to a rifle it's not a very good idea to be lining this up with what you're viewing and swinging it around the countryside, you're talking about a lot of weight and you're pointing a, perhaps a potentially loaded gun at something you wish to view, which it, from the safety point of view is not a, a good idea at all. So it's better to have a separate sight. If you have 400 pound uh, digital night vision onto your rifle and very expensive three, four thousand pounds worth of viewer, although they are getting a little cheaper now, this can be used so much easier to spot what you're looking at, swing round, view it, call it in, not call it in, whatever you wish to do, and then swap over to the much cheaper technology which will actually give you better definition before you take the shot and so is much safer.